There are three competencies. Competency, this is competency number one in the area of mental fitness, and I guess I, I'll refer to it as self-confidence or self-belief. Uh, confidence is a mood thing. I'm not in the business of creating confident people. I'm in the business of helping people have a confident mood. And if they have a couple of confident moods together, they might have a confident day. So we're in the business of mood management. So that's what I mean by competency number one. And it's three things. At the end, I'm going to suggest three things you do on Monday morning. When you get into a perfect morning for this Monday morning, I'm going to suggest three things you do next Monday. And by, by one, one o'clock on Monday at lunchtime, you will be at least 11 out of 10. And that's competency number two. It's a horrible word. I'll chance it now. I'm finished in 12 minutes, so I'll chance it now because, you know, uh, if it goes, my presentation goes downhill from here. I, th I feel it's going quite well so far. But if it goes downhill from here, I've only 12 minutes to get through. So I'm going to tell you what competency number two is, but you will not like this. It's a word that begins with the letter D. It's beside two other words that begin with the letter D in the dictionary called dentist and diarrhea. And this gets exactly the same response from Irish people. And competency number two of mental fitness is discipline. See the mood in the room now has just <laughs> taken an oza. You don't like me to tell you the word discipline. In Ireland, when you hear the word discipline, we rush to school and education and, and military and, and like miserableness. We rush immediately. It sounds like incredibly hard work, actually. So yes, I am saying on the one hand, it is going to involve a bit of discipline. But of course, I also mean just Good habits, good structure, a couple of bit of good routine, a good plan for next week. And the third competency happens when you take a hit. So there's a setback, there's a disappointment. You've been rocked back to two out of ten. Even through no fault of our own, now we've taken a hit. Again, I don't believe in positive mental attitudes, so you're allowed to be upset and cry and give out and be pissed off, but enjoying it, all of that is fine. You're allowed, you, are, you are allowed to be two out of 10, because that is perfectly normal. But what it now does is it creates now room for the third competency of mental fitness, and that's resilience. How long is it gonna take you to get going again? professional marathon runner. I worked with him a couple of years ago. There's a way to make a living, lads. So uh, he's a professional marathon runner, and he taught me the secret to resilience because he, said, he, he, he outlined what happens in every race he runs in, and it happens every single time in every race. So he said, Neil, when I'm standing on the starting line of a marathon, now he doesn't actually stand like this. <laughs> I think I would. If I could run a marathon in two and a bit hours, I'd feckin' stand like this, I think, <laughs> with a Superman outfit on. I'm doing, I'm doing all the visualization and the Tina Turner music and I'm breaking the tape and I'm holding the trophy and I'm doing all that stuff, you know, at the start, right? So that's fine. 16 miles later, when I hit the wall, I hit the wall in every race. I know it's gonna happen, and I hit the wall. 60, if you were to jump out of the crowd, and jog along beside me and talk about affirmations and visualization. I shove it up your jumper. He said, all I'm thinking about now in that moment is, can I cover 10 yards? That's it. The whole thing, the marathon becomes one 10 yard race. So I, he said, I pick a tree, I pick a car, I pick a person standing in the crowd, and all I do in that moment is I make it to that person. And when I get to that person, I'll pick something else, and then I'll pick something else. So it becomes a series of 10-yard, literally 10-yard races. Now, the interesting thing about reducing a marathon down to its most basic form, which is a 10-yard race, which we all did in the under eights in school, we did a 10-yard. So, so look, at, look at how basic he has made the race. The, his ability to do that in that moment is actually advanced sports psychology. His ability to, to do the basics well, exactly when he needs to, is actually advanced. And that's the secret to resilience is, for you and me and our business at the moment, is to do the basics better than anybody else is doing them and to encourage the people that work for us to do the basics better, than to make champions out of people who next week will just make two more phone calls than they're supposed to make, 
who will deal with something a little bit uncomfortable instead of putting it off. Making champions out of people who have the mental fitness to put their faith in. When you're down here, you have to put your faith in something. A loss of confidence is a loss of faith. When you're down here, you have to place your faith in something. That's in turning the basics into advanced. That's the secret to resilience. It's not airy-fairy and it's not woolly. That's the trick. But are we making champions out of people who have the t mental toughness to do that? First thing you should do next Monday is you should do the right thing. It's something you've been avoiding lately. It's on your to-do list. It's on a yellow sticky. It might even be on a piece of paper in your pocket at the moment. But there's a phone call. It's, it's an uncomfortable phone call. It's an uncomfortable conversation or it's an uncomfortable meeting. You, you've been avoiding it lately, so that's what I mean by you have to do the right thing next Monday. You have to do that thing next Monday that you know I'm talking about now that you've been avoiding lately. So that's the first thing. Second thing you have to do Monday morning is you have, so that's to do the right thing. Second thing is you have to do a good thing. Give somebody positive feedback. Give somebody a well done. Be specific. Don't tell them you think they're great. Tell them you think they're great because you love the way you handled blah de blah the other day. So that's, you're doing a good thing. So you do the right thing, you're doing a good thing, and the third thing you do next Monday is you make sure that somebody else does those two things. Because they have a right thing that they've been <laughs> avoiding, and they have somebody that they could give some feedback to as well. Thank you very much. <laughs>